Alright, real quick, before we begin, the music is the music I had on my PC. I've only just really recently done a reformat, and essentially I got this from my emails. I bought it from Michael Gelfi, who I speak about in this. So yeah, uh, probably not the best music for what we're doing, but you know what is better than just listening to my voice. So yeah, do enjoy, I'll see you in a bit. So, hi, welcome to the second part on this little uh, series here. It's a two-parter. You had your Q&A that's going to be constantly ongoing, and now it's time for your what modules I use. So, firstly... If you are setting up Foundry for the first time, I myself highly recommend that you look into all your options. Make sure that you can host first and foremost. If you can't host, then you're gonna to have to look for other things. But if you can self-host, do it. What does this mean? Well, if you can host, that's great. Find a way to host. Um, I myself use an old streaming PC that I had. That being said, you may have to use maybe third party things. Uh, maybe have to look into hosting through the Forge or maybe something else. I'm not too sure. What else you can do, um, it's not really been an option that I've had to look into myself. If you are self-hosting, I will say one of your biggest costs that you should look into is masking your IP. Now, I do that by routing it through my website, and then from there the website directs to another sub-website, which is essentially just the login page. So I have two URLs that people can use, but it's not my direct IP. And it's just a safety precaution because you can do a lot with someone's IP. Here is a disclaimer on that one. Um, I use two PCs, so your mileage may vary on how much you can actually use here and what you can do. Uh, here's my two PCs here. The one on the left is the PC I play on and the one on the right is the server PC. Next order of business. Um, there's a grey area, is what I will call it here. Let me give you the best example. I have a PS3. I have the cables to connect the PS3 and I have a ton of PS3 games. So say I want to play Bleach Soul Resurrection or Heavy Rain or God forbid I want to sit down and watch Metal Gear Solid 4. Well, I have a PS3 that can do that. I sadly, however, do not have a PS3 controller because those things are like diamond dust. They are gone. So, uh, how do I tackle this? Well, myself, because I own the game, I own the means to play the game, I just, you know, don't have the controller to do so, I'll emulate it. I'll download the game or I'll get a Blu-ray drive and I'll shove it in my PC and I'll put the game in there and do all the things and then I'll use my PS4 controller to play the game on the PC. I have all the things, it's just easier to do it that way than it is to look for the controller. I mean if I had the controller I'd still emulate it because I have absolutely no place to put up a PS3. That's how I look at Plutonium. I have the books, someone's just done all the work of putting it in there for Foundry. The books I don't have, I don't use, but my players may have them in D&D Beyond or such, so by all means, they can go and use it there. Some of the books I have on Roll20, but I don't have D&D Beyond. Look, I might not even have them physically, but the fact of the matter is, I paid for them at one point, and I bought most of them again for a second time, and will probably do it again for a third time. This is why it's a bit of a grey area, because for some countries, that's fine and well, it's just another way of doing something. In other countries, that's still illegal. Now, I don't know the UK's law on it, so maybe I'm admitting to doing something I shouldn't be, but either way, that's how I do it. Now, there is how I justify the mod Plutonium. Plutonium is a very funnily grey area, and in the Foundry Discord, you will um, probably find yourself removed from there if they find out you're using it. First of all, there's a few things here. If I say it's a dependency, then it will install with one of the other mods here. I won't give too much about it. For everything else, however, let's get into it. So... This here's my foundry. Now, this here is specifically Dungeon of the Mad Mage, because we're talking about that. I use most of the same mods everywhere else, or in this case they're called uh, modules. Now, for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the very first one you actually want to get for your maps. Siren maps for Undermountain. You get this on his Patreon, it comes with sounds, it comes fully walled, it comes with the maps. It's amazing, it's perfect, it's 10 out of 10. Um, on lower end machines, it can be a bit of an issue. Uh, just remember that if you were doing it on roll 20, uh, it could become unplayable because the, the, the whole reason anyone I know, including myself, moves from roll 20 to Foundry is this fucking game. Uh, let's start off. Advanced macros. It's great for someone who actually knows how to use macros and make macros and use Foundry. Uh, it gives them a lot of additional functionality, is the word I'm looking for there. That additional functionality is better to have and not need than need and not have at that moment in time is what I'll say there. I'll turn the pause icon. Uh, it gives me a little Halister logo here. Great to have. Use it in all my campaigns. Dragonlance with the Dragonlance logo. Uh, you know, 
Cursor Star has a Star logo, things like that. Looks very nice, and it's just something different than Game Paused and a Compass. I mean, doors, it's just some audible feedback for doors. Uh, the player walks up to the door, door opens, they hear noise of a door opening. So it means if they go up to a door that's locked. They don't know it's locked until they click it and they hear the noise. Audible feedback, excellent to have. Arms Reach runs really well with it. Arm Reach just means you need to be within five foot of the door you want to open else you won't open it because you know automated animations uh when you target things uh, a lot of my players do a lot of targeting and when they attack it has a little animation that goes with it it's just a nice thing to have very good it's great some of it's already built in there as well which is amazing combat focus is the reason that i can have initiative up here and the chat box here so i can actually see who's done what for their attacks combat utility belt combat utility belt here is my conditioners and this one here this is a lot of great stuff such as the concentrator the awarding experience, hiding names, hiding combatants, and this one here allows me to put in, you know, this is where I added my conditions for like bloodied, uh, my emboldening bonds, slowed, who's failed things, who's an important named character that I've just not fucking named, stuff like that. Very good, very easy to have, works well, recommend to have it just so you can see things at a glance on tokens. DDB Importer, now this one here, if your players have made their sheets on d and Beyond, it means that they can link you to the sheet and you can just import the sheet that way. They can close down D&D Beyond. Their character is now here with all of the stuff. Defense droppables. Uh, I simply just use that to drop my characters in and out of scenes. Uh, it lets me drag the folder rather than dragging them one at a time, one at a time. Dice tray. Uh, dice tray is just this little bit down here. I'm to roll 2d6. Go like that. Boom, boom. There's five. It has everything, including this one here, your D100. Again, speed. It's there for players and DMs. D&D 5e drag ruler integration. So... This one here, if I grab the Richard token and say I want to move him. So this green line, this is the drag roller. If it's green, it means he can actually do that with his movement. If it's yellow, that then means he is dashing. And when it hits red, it means he can no longer do that because that is his movement. Dynamic effects using active effect. This is just essentially an addition to your automated animations. It does a bunch more stuff and it just makes things a lot nicer. Easy, you barely need to touch it if you do want to touch it. Encounter statistics is just a journal entry filled with things, filled with numbers that you can look at to joke around with. Our last fight there, for example, and most overall damage done by Vexation, most damage in one turn done by her, highest hit in one round was done by Richard, the most supporting actions was King, the most healing actions was King. Uh, notice how it wasn't our cleric. Find the culprit. If you have any issues, find the culprit, it's the one for you. It just turns off half your modules and you say yes or no, whether or not the problem's fixed and eventually finds out what's causing the issue. And then it lets you tweak with them until they no longer cause the issue. And then it resets everything the way it was. Amazing, great to have, helped me a few things. Forian's copy environment is just essentially taking everything that's here and I can just put them into another game. Like their settings and everything just essentially you know copy and paste but it doesn't do the maps and such the quest log which you can see down here well let me to do a certain things like you know throne here the party actually have the throne so this is what they'll get someone's going to get a quiver they'll all get 500 experience and they'll get 20 silvered arrows which will be very useful foundry community macros this one here you can find in the compendium now there's a few of them here um some of them for certain games pathfinder pathfinder but then they just got some community role macros the 5v1 has some good stuff there that i highly recommend and there is also one for like a light picker which is amazing fx master uh, that allows you to add like brain and such to scenes it allows you to like make scenes black and white it's very much just a way to add a little bit of ambience i don't know what it came in with and i don't know why i needed it but i've used it a lot and i do enjoy it hurry up and uh, that just lets me set a combat timer it essentially means that if there's like about a minute and 30 if i'm saying your name for 30 seconds and you're not saying anything back you're dodging. Initiative double click just lets me change initiative if need be, if there's maybe been a little mess up or something. Ivan Dutch's music packs. Now, Ivan Dutch's music is some really good music to have. Basically free to use. He has a few little things. You'll see it in all of my descriptions where it's got his stuff. Now, for your animations and how things look, JB to a Patreon complete collection. There is a free collection as well. However, I pay for the I pay for the premium Patreon one. Less bog. Less log allows me to take this character token here. So you can see everything dims out. No, it doesn't. This is only for me. It's GM vision. You know, the GM sees everything. I should know what's coming around the corner. And if I click the token and say, you know, say someone says, can I see that there? They see just the edge of a token and no more. You know, I'll see just how much they can see and tell them whether or not they can see it or if it needs a roll. 
Michael Gelfie Studio Audio Pack. Michael Gelfie's music is amazing. There's links in the description for his stuff. I highly recommend that you look into that. He has some good free stuff here, but it's stuff you can usually get for around twelve dollars. There's a ton of good music in there. Very, very thematic. Monk's active tile triggers. To give you an idea of the active tile triggers, we'll just look here. This here's a tile. Only I can see the tile, but my players can still activate it. This will teleport them to a different area on a different map. Monk's combat details, combat marker, and little details. Um, these were all just used to be called little details, but it's all been kind of spread out there. So I kind of need all three of them. They all do very separate and different things. It's definitely something you should look into to see what you can do and see what you would need. You may be a chance that you don't need one of them or you don't need all of them. Now, Monk's walls, as we see here, this uh, Sirens, he's got all of the walls here, which is great and amazing. Uh, that being said, however, say I need to very quickly encase my players in a wall. Then I can use this here for freehand. So, you know, I go like that, give them a wall, or click here. Just quickly wall them in, no big issue, no big deal. Now the token bar, which I seem to have skipped, is just this thing here. And it lets me award additional experience if things go wrong, lets me set movements. I can see armor class, health points, and also passive perceptions. I'm going to change that because Ronan... He has a very high passive perception. Now, plutonium. Plutonium is our little FA1 there. Um, again, if you are going to use it, just beware of some of these side effects that can come with using it. And, you know, no lawyer. So I just won't discuss plutonium in any way, shape or form. I'll tell you about it. But as for what I use it for and what it can be used for, these are two separate ends. Like, I use it for character mancer and important things. However... I have seen people use that to completely mod the fuck out of Foundry. So, um, yeah. Me bringing it up, I, I can't explain it and do it justice. So, yeah. It's just very useful. Now, ready, set, roll. Ready, set, roll is an automator here. This is ready, set, roll. So, I take this, grab this character sheet here, and she makes a whip attack. 23 for 8. You can roll rolling your D8 and your damage die in one go IRL. Now really quickly, so uh, there's another module out there called Biddy QOM, it's a MIDI quality of life. Essentially, it's another roll automation thing. It has a lot more stuff in it. However, it conflicts with an awful lot of modules I use. Yes, it would mean that I wouldn't need to use those modules. However, those modules do it better than the way MIDI QOL does it, to my liking, so I don't use it. If you wish to use MIDI QOL, there's hundreds of tutorials out there. I implore you to go take a little look after this. Back to the main video. Sequencer. Uh, sequencer is actually what's used here. So this is my G2B. So maybe I'm going to set up a new animation or something. Um, I can just look here to see what it is and pull the file. Very easy. It's very effective and useful. Settings extender. I did get that wrong. It is just a dependency for some other stuff. However, it's better to have it and not need it and need it and not have it. I don't know what it came in with, but just get it because you may need it. Sock lib, uh, you just need that as a dependency, don't worry. Splatter is what allows me to take a token like, you know, this bug, this hobgoblin down here and go splat manually. Tagger, tagger is that one I was talking about that you can use with the tiles. It's very good, I've used it mainly in Dragonlands. So you can take it where you know you want all the lights in the room to turn on. Then, you know, you set them all with the tag, turn on. And then you set down the tile and you set the tile to activate the tag. So instead of activating maybe 20 lights, it activates one thing and that one thing quickly lights. Tidy 5e sheets. Um, this is essentially the tidy 5e sheet. This here's foundry sheet. I don't like it. I there's just a lot there. It's kind of blocky. Um, I much prefer this one myself. And it comes in dark mode. Not gonna argue with dark mode. Tidy UI just kind of compresses everything down. It makes it a lot nicer to look at, in my opinion. Like, you know, it removes an awful lot of negative space. Token Flip is one I bought. Ronan has a Mind Flare costume. He's now in his Mind Flare costume. It lets me know how it reacts appropriately. And if it's Revel, um, Revel's Changeling. Revel can be whoever Revel wants to be. It's just, I need to know who that is. Torch is a very useful one. Uh, so, uh, all my players technically have Dark Vision here, but say they don't. They click this here and you can just about see how the room gets a little bit brighter. Then finally, Whisper Box. So, I need to move myself like this, which is really awkward. It's here on Whisper Box and it opens up this little box here and I can see Whispers. I can send a Whisper to someone and then close the box. They can do the same back, it makes it easier. 
So yeah, that is all the modules I use from playing Dragonlance, the Center of Furnace, Dungeons of the Mad Mage, and run any of my one shots. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below or in the other video as well, where that is basically an ongoing QA forever, you know, until I decide it's not. <laughs> but yeah. Um links are all in the description. So you can just see them all, you can just go straight to the Foundry website, just go to Google and get them. Some of them are prepaid, so I will link to the Patreons and such that they come from. But yeah, tell them guys. Uh, why not? Feel free to like, give a wee comment, give a wee subscribe. I don't ever thought I'd ever say that again in my life. But yeah, until then guys, I will catch you in a bit.